Hey everyone, this is part two of our line plot lesson. I'm going to go over a couple more examples of how to read line plots and how to create them. So when we look at this first example, it says a, the line plot shows the lengths of sticks in inches. Use the line plot to answer the question. So this time we're going to be going over how to read and analyze the data from our line plot. So for part A, it says how many sticks are two inches long? So if we look at our line plot, at the bottom it says inches. That means that one, two, three, four, and five represent the length of inches for the length of sticks because length of six is our title. That's what we're talking about for this line plot. So if we wanna know how many sticks are two inches long, we wanna count how many X's are above the two. Because in a line plot, every X represents one piece of information or one point for the data. So every piece of data it represent, is represented by one X. So how many sticks are two inches long? Well, here's two, and we count the X's above. And that means that we have two X's, so we have two sticks. All right, we want to put that label of six because we want to know what we're talking about when we're talking about the two. Now for part B, what is the length of most of the sticks? So when we look at this, we want to say which one has the most. So when we quickly look at this, we see that there are the most X's above one inch. So the length of most of the sticks would be one inch. And then part three, or part C, is what does each X stand for on the line plot? And we already mentioned that. We said that every X stands for one piece of data. And in this case, we're talking about the length of six. So every X represents a stick. And we can think about that as just a stick or a stick with that length. Um, either way, would describe what X stands for, okay? And just to add on to this, if we wanna think about how many sticks they compared, we would add all of the X's up. So if we counted all of the X's, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there were nine total sticks. So that might be another question you're asked about line plots. And another type of question you might be asked is to compare. So if we're comparing two types of lengths, we might say how many more sticks were, the were one inch compared to three inches? So if we were comparing our one inch to three inches, we're gonna say, well, one inch has three X's, so three sticks were one inch, and three inches has one X, so that's one stick. So one had three, and three had one. So when we're comparing our three to our one, we say that there were two more sticks that were one inch long compared to three inches long. Okay, so that might be another way that you're asked to analyze or use the data in a line plot. All right, let's look at another one. For number four, it says use the data in the list to create a line plot. Remember to give your line plot a title and a label on the bottom. So when we're looking at this data in the box here, I see that this already has a title, length of strips. So I'm gonna stick with that as my title. So I'm gonna Make my tail at the top here as length of strips. So that's my title because it was already the title from our data. Now, we need to look at our data and see what is the range that I talked about in my other video. Well, I see six is the biggest and one centimeter is the smallest. So that means that my range for my line plot is going to be one through six, okay? So when I think about that, that if I count those numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and six, that's six numbers. 
So when I look at my number line, or my line for my line plot, I need to put those six numbers spread out evenly. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, and six. It's pretty even. Um, it's not that necessary to measure it with a ruler or anything, but it's pretty spread out because we're really not looking at the spacing when we're looking at a line plot we're looking at how much is above it so we're looking at the x's above to read our data so when we do when we're making this line plot we now have to number it we have our one two three four five and six all right and we said that we needed a title and we also needed a label at the bottom. That rep tells us what these numbers represent. And if I look at my data in my box, they represent centimeters. So I'm gonna say that this is centimeters. So our one through six represent how long the strips are. So let's go through our data and put X's on our line plot to represent each of these numbers. So first we have six, I'm gonna put an X above six. I'm just going to check it off or mark it off, however you want to mark it. Put a line through it or however. For 5 centimeters, put an X above 5. 3 centimeters is the next one, so put an X above 3. And you see that all of these X's I've put are all lined up pretty close to the same spacing. So they're about the same distance from our line. And that's kind of important to quickly read. We don't want to make our X's too small or too big compared to the other ones because we're not going to be able to read our line plot as easily. We want our X's to be about the same size and about the same distance from our line. So the next one is two centimeters. So put an X above the two. And we have six. So I'm going to go up a little bit, make the X about the same size and just spaced up a little bit. So it's in its own new line. Now I have four centimeters, so an X above my four. One centimeter, so put an X above the one. And the last piece of data is five centimeters, so I'm gonna put a second X above my five. So that would be how I would create a line plot using the data from our box. So this shows the length of strips in centimeters. All right, it shows that there was one that was one centimeter, two that were two centimeters, oh, sorry, one that was one centimeter, and one that was three, one that was four centimeters, but then there were two that were five and six centimeters long. So we have to be very careful when we're reading our X's and being very neat when we're making our line plot. All right, so I hope this helps you guys. I know you have a worksheet on this uh, if you're working at home, um, and you can always come up with your own data um, that you can collect at home on different things, you can measure things, and create your own line plot as well to practice. I right, hope this helps you guys, and check out some of my other videos as well to explain some ideas that you're working on at home.